Hello, everyone. This is Five Minutes with Languages and Cultures staff. My guest today is Consuelo Martinez Reyes, a lecturer in Spanish and Latin American studies. Consuelo, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm from Puerto Rico and um, I write, I teach Spanish. Um, I enjoy Zumba classes. <laughs> I enjoy dancing uh, and uh, putting together puzzles. <laughs> but when it comes to your uh, teaching and your research, so what does your everyday work look like, everyday work day look like? Well, I teach uh, introductory Spanish. I also teach at the higher level. I teach our INTS, one of our INTS units, a language um, literature and translation. And that's very interesting because I see students from when they begin to when they finish their degree. So you see that whole um, movement across their careers and their improvement. Uh, and in terms of research, I look at the um, ways in which gender and sexuality is represented in uh, literature from the Hispanic Caribbean, also a bit of cinema. If you had to pinpoint one or two things what you like best about your job, what would that be? <sighs> I, I, I like two things. One is that we get to research on very um, much needed things. Um, and we get to expand the knowledge that people have about specific things. Um, but mostly I enjoy interacting with our students. Um, and I'm really missing that because of the current lockdown. But I really like seeing our students, um, just uh, interacting with them, uh, seeing their progress. Um, in Europe in recent years, and recent I mean like last 15, maybe even towards 20 years, Spanish has gained a lot of popularity. I mean, not that I'm saying that Spanish is not important in one of the world languages, but how would you explain that? How come the Spanish might be so interesting to, to some uh, young people across the world? Well, I've heard that Mexican soap operas have something to do with that. Um, I also know that uh, Colombian soap operas and La Reina del Sur, for example, um, make Spanish very popular, but music definitely is pushing mm. Spanish through um, reggaeton, uh, just uh, more, more pop music like Ricky Martin and Shakira have really made Spanish popular. Um, and it, it's very impressive because you think, right, Spanish is in the top um, most spoken languages around the world. So it really had to take uh, pop culture to put it in the map, I'd say. And Zumba, you mentioned Zumba. Zumba fits in perfectly in that picture, doesn't it? Yes, yes. So even if you go to the gym, you can get some Spanish in. Okay, you mentioned you were a writer. So, and I know for a fact that you recently uh, had your um, book of short stories translated, right? Or, or written or published. Tell us yes, a little bit yes. about that. So um, it's called En Blanco which is actually very difficult to translate because it's uh, like talking about a blank slate. So the translator did a great job and he translated it as black canvases uh, in English. So it was published in Spanish in 2018 and um, just this year in English. And it's a collection of short stories um, that take place in the Caribbean and that take uh, just very mundane everyday things into like an exaggerated state that can sometimes be um, funny, but can sometimes be scary. So it's it's all like a, a, an exaggeration of everyday life. What inspires you when you write? Um, little little things, um, little moments, phrases, dreams. Sometimes I do listen to music a lot um, before I write. I think music gets me in a in a mood that then makes me think about say that fear or that status of funny, being funny. Uh, so I get uh, inspiration from everyday life, really. Um, Consuelo, lockdown, you mentioned you missed your students. Anything else you particularly missed during lockdown and during this pandemic year? It's not just the lockdown, it's also the fact that we can't travel. So anything else that you can't wait to get back? I can't you know? wait. To, I can't wait to see my family. I really miss my family because they are, most of them, all the way back in Puerto Rico. Uh, and um, I haven't seen them in years now. So I'm really looking forward to seeing my niece and um, my, my siblings, just everyone, really. 
Uh, so I, I miss traveling, not the being 24 hours in a plane, but, but I do miss um, Puerto Rico, food in Puerto Rico, just the uh, music and just uh, people being friendly in my own language all the time. Mm -hmm. It hasn't been easy for parents of young children during this lockdown. That was another kind of um, um, thing that you had to juggle during this time. Yes, yes. I have uh, one of my daughters is school age and it's been <laughs> full on trying to write, teach our students and then go teach uh, my daughter, um, especially not in uh, subjects that are my expertise. <laughs> so we don't want our parents to teach us. Um, so it's a weird role that we all have to play. Yeah, we are usually not very popular as teachers to our own children, right? Yeah. As a linguist, I, I would be interested to know, is there a substantial difference between Puerto Rican Spanish pronunciation maybe and Spanish Spanish? Or can you give us a little bit, some something interesting about that? Yes, yes. So we definitely have a lot of different vocabulary, which I uh, talk about uh, in the classroom a lot because I want students to um, be aware that, you know, in the same way that in English, we have, you know, the prawn versus shrimp debate, right? Um, uh, we have a similar situation with Spanish and the different countries, but not only that, Spanish is actually considered very fast Spanish and very difficult to understand. Just like Australian English is difficult to understand mm -hmm. to some people because our vowels are quite wide and um, words are quite, um, we, we skip a lot of consonants. Mm -hmm. um, so it sounds like a very flexible way of pronouncing everything. So it is quite, it is quite hard. Uh, so my students should feel very proud <laughs> that they understand me. So, but would I still say muchas gracias for the interview or would it be something more Puerto Rican? Hmm, in terms of thank you, sí, muchas gracias, but what we do have we do have a lot of words for partying. Okay. <laughs> so so uh, we might have un vacilón, un julepe, eh, un party, like in English, un bembe. So we have a lot of these words that we borrowed from, um, say, from African languages. Eh, mm. It from... seems to me what you've tried to convey just now is that you're also missing partying <laughs> yes definitely <laughs> thank you so much consuela it was a pleasure to have you thank you yes ma'am